everyone. I'm um, Sarah Hildley from Edit Her. Some of you may have heard of our organisation. We are an international standards body um, coordinating the development of the standards infrastructure for electronic commerce in the book, serials and e-book sectors. We're very much publishing focused, so we've heard today about different parts of the supply chain, different influences on accessibility, and I'm going to be talking to you mainly from a publisher's point of view. I'm an ex-publisher myself, and um, we're editor, as well as maintaining standards in these sectors, also involve ourselves in key national and international projects. And the one that I am um, employed to look after on our behalf is called the Enabling Technologies Framework Project. Now this is a wide program project, it's uh, the World Intellectual Property Organization. And we, are de we have delivered this project in collaboration with colleagues from the DAISY Consortium internationally. If we had a mission statement, it would be that we, would, we are here to facilitate the access of copyrighted works for people with print impairment. So that's people with visual impairment, with dyslexia and learning difficulties, and with motor difficulties, in, um, with the consequence that printed products is simply inaccessible. And our role in the project, the DAISY, Daisy Consortium's role has been very technical, our role is very much based around providing guidance for publishers, offering training, and as a, a kind of byproduct of that, being a liaison and a communication body between the publishing industry and um, the advocacy and print impairment community. We do advocate for standards, sorry Alistair, <laughs> um, but uh, the standards that enable us to um, make sure that we can deliver fully accessible content. So really the first deliverable at the end of the first year of the project was um, a piece called, the, it's got a snazzy title, Accessible Publishing, Best Practice Guidelines for Publishers. Um, and it does what it says on the tin really, it's a manual, not a report. It's about 50 to 60 pages long at the moment. We update it on a yearly basis. We've just issued version four. And it's for the internal supply chain within a publishing community. So we provide guidance for the um, editors in-house, for designers, for production departments, for IT departments, how everyone can play their part to provide accessible content. On top of that, um, there are quite detailed <coughs> Um, how-to section, so how to include structure within your files, how to conduct an accessibility audit. Um, and most importantly, at the end of the guidelines, we have quite a detailed resources section, so providing links to all the guidance that you'll hear about this morning and the bodies, the inter international bodies that can assist you in all your efforts. We are quite, we're quite proud of the fact that these are available in six languages, English, French, Italian, Spanish, German, and Japanese, in a variety of accessible formats. Currently, the English version is available in Word, HTML5, accessible PDF, and accessible EPUB3. So, um, hopefully something for everyone. Quick look at the table of contents, just to show you how extensive it is, but it's designed so that you can dip in and out. It's not a, a start to finish read. If you're a senior executive and you need to know about how to set an accessibility policy, there's a small section there. The top page that I've highlighted on the right, which is uh, it's totally inaccessible to all of you, I would imagine, sitting there in the audience, is actually a page from the section entitled Accessible Formats. So simply, it goes through every format that is available to us as publishers and tells you how accessible these particular formats are. There's a lot of confusion over PDF, for instance. You can provide a, 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 an extraordinarily inaccessible PDF to um, a customer that you may have um, used in-house to provide to your printer for your hard copy print version, whereas you could actually also provide an accessible PDF. So, this section in particular has been of a lot of use to publishers because it kind of gets down to the nitty gritty of which formats are we talking about. We've come
come quite a long way already, and this is not just down to the Enabling Technologies Framework Project, it's down to the collaboration of various organisations that you see here today, both nationally and internationally. This is receiving a lot of focus globally. Um, but awareness and knowledge within our industry is changing and at an enormous pace. In particular, at the bottom, it's interesting to see the number of people that are considering using the EPUB 3 format, which I will, come, I will mention briefly in, in a moment. But um, sadly, only 43% of those people are aware that it is, in fact, the most accessible format that we, work, we can work with. So clearly, there's still work to be done. But we're, we're very um, optimistic that we've come quite a long way already. So the other real main focus of our work on this project is training, providing training for publishers that's quick, that's easy, that's informative, and a practical demonstration of our guidelines. There are no accessibility courses for publishers at large institutions. And rather than go that route, we've been really lucky to be able to work with Alistair and his team in using the resources that they've been able to provide us with. Um, and Alistair and I have concocted, that, that makes it sound not very sensible, but we've developed five um, learning objects which are available <coughs> online to be able to take out your desktop free of charge. They're between 10 and 20 minutes long each. And they're a fabulous introduction to accessibility. They demonstrate practically some of the areas that we concentrate on in the guidelines. Um, they're easy to use and can be taken by as part of an induction program within a publishing environment. They can be looked at by senior executives. They're designed to be as accessible as we can. They work on many mobile devices too. There we are. Thank you, Alistair. I'm just going to show you a few pages from these guidelines, so um, from these training um, modules, so that you can get a feel for them. So this is the one from an introduction to print impairment, a quick description, hopefully, of, of um, what it's like to be dyslexic and how inaccessible the product can be for dyslexic users. This one is on our accessibility and metadata learning object written and devised by my colleague Graham Bell, who some of you may know. He's our chief data architect and ex-colleague of mine at Collins. Um, he manages and maintains the Onyx for Books metadata um, codes within, um, within Editor. And this one's particularly interesting because he's made it as practical as he can. You click on, some, uh, you click on a part of that front cover and Graham's Onyx description appears on the side. So it's, 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 um, we're making it as practical as we can. Accessible images. Um, images are one of the biggest challenges for people trying to provide accessible content. It's extremely, uh, you need to be extremely skilled to write successful image descriptions. We're not talking about captions here. We're talking about alternative text to properly describe an image within a given context. And we've to Alistair and I have spent um, a long time on this particular module, and we've worked with colleagues from Benetech in California who um, collaborate on the Diagram Project in the US, on putting together a learning object to help publishers understand the challenges of providing accessible images, and what they can do, and where they can find further help on how to be successful in this area. Imagine trying to write image descriptions for those four pictures on the right. It can be done, but it's, it's a learning process. Right, moving on. Um, I've just got to find my spot because I've slightly gone off today's page. So if you are... Um, thinking about formalizing your approach to digital content, and you're thinking about accessibility issues, then we urge you to think about EPUB 3. Um, the new EPUB 3 standard offers many features of the existing specialist alternative um, accessible format, the DAISY standard, but it provides you with a mainstream option. So to go back to what Anna was saying earlier, an accessible EPUB 3 file 
offers a print-impaired person the opportunity to access content at the same time, at the same price, and in the same format as everybody else. The new version of our guidelines cover, looks at EPUB 3 in much greater detail than it ever did before, and we have prepared guidance um, on how to prepare your content files correctly right from the very start, how to include that meaningful semantic structure that Jane needs in order to be able to navigate the platform correctly. So whilst we were looking at the platforms earlier, the content that you're preparing as publishers needs to be correctly structured before it's delivered to that platform. So how to prepare that type of structure, how to enable your text to speech, how to allow the, how to allow the customization of the appearance of your text. And whether you're running an XML first workflow, an XML last workflow, or as I think it, Hugh once said to me, that XML hardly ever works. <laughs> you can still publish accessibly in any of these scenarios. But um, EPUB 3, we, we would advocate, is the way forward as a long-term solution to mainstreaming accessibility. And this O'Reilly publication that I've highlighted in the bottom right, and for which this is the link at the bottom, written by um, a colleague of ours at CNIB, Matt Garish, absolutely drills down into the detail of how to produce an accessible EPUB 3 file. That is known as the industry kind of guru's novel, um, novel piece on accessible EPUB 3. And if this is at the direction that I hope you would be considering, I want to urge you to um, get hold of this. It's completely free online. Um, all of these elements within the EPUB, all of the elements within the EPUB 3 format improve the content for everyone. I think that Hugh's remarks about publishing accessibly or just better publishing, it, it, it en enriches the experience for all of us, whether we're print impaired or not. So these features are just the right thing to put in right from the very start. <coughs> However, if you're not at the stage where you're formalizing your digital um, approach to publishing, there are still things that you can do absolutely straight away. So you can formalize your in-house commitment. So from the very top, from your, from see, these things happen most successfully if our senior executives can take hold of them and drive them forward. Include something in your policy about accessibility. Show your in-house commitment and understand and encourage awareness within your, within your um, employee base. Be an advocate or employ an advocate or encourage an existing employees to be advocates. So, Take away these messages that you've heard today and try and build something really positive in-house and communicate industry news. Use available metadata. I would say that really because Editor um, maintained the Onyx the books standard, but without discoverability of your accessible products, sometimes it's, there's little point in having done all that work to prepare the accessible so make sure that whatever you do, you allow for discoverability. We have developed a code list 196 within the Onyx for Books um, metadata standard, which includes 13 descriptions for accessible content. And we would, we would encourage you to look at those and use those wherever possible. Shout, I mean, shout about it. It's good marketing. Use the metadata. And finally, well, there is an... There is a group in the UK which we're very proud to be part of called the Accessibility Action Group. Um, it includes not only people from our publishing industry and the rest of the supply chain, but highlighted Dyslexia Action, RNIB, Gist Tech Disc, ourselves, and the Publishers Association. And in 2012, we produced um, a kind of call to action, really, a, a joint statement on accessibility in e on ebooks showing the industry our intent and how serious we are about this. And we're encouraging companies and um, colleagues globally to endorse this wherever they can. If you put it on your website, that would be absolutely terrific. But this is a big deal, and um, we, we hope that you would join us in with us. What next? 
Well, as I, as I mentioned, our project has been very much publisher-based, but we do appreciate, and Alistair touched on this, that the various different parts of the supply chain have to come together to make this work. You might provide your, plat you might provide your platform provider with the most accessible EPUB3 file you can possibly muster, and then their platform might be completely inaccessible. So our, we see our remit now as pushing this out to the rest of the supply chain, speaking to platform providers, speaking to device manufacturers, and collaborating as much as we can. And the Accessibility Action Group are actively involved in doing that, so it's, 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 a, it's a joint effort. And finally, get in touch with us if we can help you with any of this. It's all, we're, we're all here to collaborate and help. So. Thank you very much.